Hello friends, in today's session for Fundamentals of Management, we are going to study about decentralization. I am Professor Asa Sani from IMS Ghazabad University Courses Campus. So let's begin the session by understanding the concept of decentralization. Decentralization is a situation in which ultimate authority to command and the ultimate responsibility for results is localized as far as as far down in the organization as efficient management of the organization permits. We can also say that uh, de decentralization refers to the systematic effort to delegate to the lowest level all authority except that which can only be exercised at the central points. Thus, centralization, thus, decentralization means reservation of some authority, for example, to plan, organize, direct, and control, is restricted at the top level and delegation of authority to make routine decisions to make routine decisions at points as near as possible to where actions can take place. Decentralization is extension of delegation, which means entrustment of responsibility and authority from an individual to another. But decentralization means scattering of authority throughout the organization. It is a fusion of authority within the enterprise. Delegation from one person to another is a complete process. But decentralization is completed only when the maximum possible delegation is made to all the people at all levels in the organization. This can be better understood with an example. For example, suppose in a company, all leave applications are approved by the general manager. He feels overburdened and transfers this authority to the personal manager. This is an example of delegation of authority. But if the general manager depresses the authority to various heads of the departments to approve the leave applications for their respective departments, this is an example of decentralization of authority. In other words, decentralization is an extension of delegation of authority. If an, execute, if an executive delegates the authority, he multiplies it into two and if he de decentralizes it, it, it in other words, decentralization is an extension of delegation of authority. If an, execu if an executive delegates authority, he multiplies it by 2 and if he decentralizes it, it multiplies it by many. Thus, there are various factors in that affect decentralization. The first one is decentralization of authority is facilitated when it is released to take quick and appropriate decisions at the levels at, at which they are really required with a view to cash the to cash on the opportunity present secondly secondly when the top management wants to reduce communication work decentralization of authority is a better option Thirdly, the nature of companies, products or markets may require decentralization of decision making to provide special emphasis to a product line or a market. Technological changes may also create conditions favorable for decentralization. Thirdly, growth and diversification of activities for a company may make decentralization necessary to introduce flexibility in operations and also facilitate proper direction and relieve the top executives from the burden of extra work. So moving ahead, we will be discussing the advantages and disadvantages of decentralization. The merits of decentralization can be, number one, it relieves the top management from, it relieves top management of much workload. Secondly, it makes jobs at the lower levels of the organization more attractive and interesting. As a result, the levels of motivation of the employee increases. Third, it increases. Third, it encourages initiatives at the lower levels where the employees are allowed to participate in the decision-making process. 
At the same time, decisions made closer to the actual situations are likely to be more realistic. Effective decisions are possible because of the speed and first-hand knowledge that decentralization provides. It also helps in management development. Future executives develop best when they are given authority and responsibility to manage some things. Lastly, it is easier to judge the performance of an executive when he or she is put in charge of an autonomous unit of administration. So this was all about the advantages or the merits that decentralization offers. On the contrary, there are some of restrictions or demerits of decentralization. Decentralization of authority may suffer from the following. Number one, it increases the administrative cost due to duplication of specialist services and the appointment of capable executives at the lower levels. Also, it becomes difficult for the top management to exercise control over what decisions are what decisions they are making. Thirdly, the executives at the lower levels may develop a narrow outlook to the determinants of all determinants of the overall interest of the organization. At the same time, it hampers uniformity in the decision making and consistency of procedures. And lastly, in emergency situations, decentralization cannot be tackled properly. Adjustments to changing conditions may be very difficult in terms of decentralization. So, there is a difference. So, we can say that there is a difference between delegation and decentralization. In this slide, we'll be studying about the difference between delegation and decentralization. The, phase the first basis on which we'll be differentiating both is the meaning itself. Delegation refers to entrusting the authority by a manager to his immediate subordinate in a work unit, whereas in decentralization, it is a systematic delegation of authority at all levels and in all functions of the organization. It is an extension of delegation to the lowest level in the organization. The second is the scope. Delegation involves a limited transfer of authority and hence its scope is limited. Whereas, decentralization involves a wide distribution of authority throughout the organization. The third point of difference is relationship. The delegant is the nearest subordinate of the delegator. It is therefore a relationship between two persons, that is the superior and the subordinate. On the contrary, it is not... On the contrary, decentralization involves transfer of authority from a higher level to the lowest level in the organization. The fourth difference is of nature. Delegation is adopted by the managers for getting work done on a daily routine basis. Whereas, decentralization is a deliberate effort and it requires the formulation of policy at the top level to disperse authority. Next point of difference is precondition. Decentralization is not essential for delegation, whereas delegation is essential for decentralization. Next point of difference is compulsion or need. Delegation is essential if an executive wants to get the assistance of a subordinate in doing some task, whereas decentralization is optimal. Top management of an organization may not think it is necessary or transfer authority to the lowest level. And the last point of difference is control. The delegator continues having his control over his subordinates even after delegation of authority. Whereas under decentralization, top management exercises control in a general manner. Sufficient autonomy or freedom of action is granted to the lower levels. So this was all about the difference between decentralization and delegation that all that is all for today's session. Thank you so much.